Hello world, Eggs here. And today we're gonna to talk about a few things you should know before getting into the chemical engineering field for the first time. These are some things that I picked up upon as a student and as an engineer in the industry that I think would be really helpful for someone who's going down this career path and thinking about it for the first time. So first of all, chemistry and chemical engineering are two very different beasts. Chemistry is the study of reactions and the discovery of reactions. Chemical engineering is taking the reactions that the chemists have come up with and trying to optimize them and put them in a calculated position where you can rely on them. So as a chemical engineer, you're going to be working in a, usually a chemical setting. However, you're gonna be more focusing on mechanical aspects of a chemical reaction. So you can think of a chemical engineer as a mechanical engineer who's extremely comfortable with chemistry. There's a lot of things that a chemical engineer can do that a mechanical engineer can't, such as scaling up chemical processes, chemical reaction engineering, uh, distillation is a really big one, and that's really where the field shines. Another big difference between chemists and chemical engineers is that usually a chemical engineer can become a well-respected professional who is a manager of chemical processes as with just a bachelor degree. Whereas a chemist is usually gonna to have to earn a PhD before they can start leading teams and getting paid manager money. Now, all that being said, chemical engineers are not the chemists, but if the chemist is out of the room, they're the de facto chemistry specialist and they better be real comfortable with those chemical concepts because everyone's gonna be looking at them as the professional. Now, the next one you probably already heard about, that's that chemical engineers usually live in the middle of nowhere. Most chemical engineers become process engineers and they work at chemical plants. Now, chemical plants are really big, they take up a lot of room, and companies like to put them in areas that have cheap real estate. And honestly, a lot of people don't wanna live next to a chemical plant. They're not always the best neighbors and they're not great for property value. But don't let that hold you back. There's probably a chemical plant near you or your favorite city, as long as you're willing to drive a little bit. The northeastern cities are covered with chemical plants. Houston is a massive chemical engineering hub and it's a really cool city. Not to mention California has tons of chemical plants. LA mostly based on the fact that they've got a lot of oil reserves and San Francisco with Silicon Valley. Now that you've settled on your location, let's talk about the realities of the job. Process engineers are usually really well compensated, but it's also a lot of hard work. You'll be brought on a team to optimize or improve a process in such a way that it makes the company more money. Now these processes, they usually run 24 hours a day, seven days a week and they don't like to shut down. And whenever they do have a problem, it's probably not going to be during the day from nine to five. They can be pretty finicky and shut down at night or have issues at night. So a lot of engineers trying to get that product out the door are gonna find themselves working some late hours or even on the weekends in some cases. On the plus side, this is a really exciting place to be. A lot of people are addicted to this environment because they can immediately see either the success of their project or the failure of their project. A lot of times product development engineers won't see the fruits of their labor until years after they've put an effort and work. Whereas in a manufacturing environment, it's usually the next hour or the next day that you're gonna find out that your project was a success or a failure. And you'll always feel like you're making an impact. Another thing people don't think about when it comes to chemical engineering is how much socializing is involved. Some people are tricked into thinking that chemical engineers are all about the technical skills and the know-how and the solo problem solving, but that's just not the case for chemical engineers, especially in a manufacturing environment. Usually you're gonna have to work on really big teams. There's this saying that nothing happens in a vacuum. Whatever you wanna get done in a chemical manufacturing environment, it's probably gonna take at least five or 10 other people to actually make it happen. You're also gonna have a lot of responsibilities. Most chemical engineers are gonna to have to be some sort of manager. Either you're going to manage a small segment of the process and its efficiency, maybe you'll manage the quality of the final product you'll be responsible for having good quality product that have high yields. Perhaps you'll be responsible for the chemical safety of a particular process. You're also gonna be able to get into project engineering, leading and managing either large and small projects to improve the process. As a manager, you're gonna to have to sit in a lot of meetings and sell your ideas. You're gonna to have to convince other engineers and other managers that your project or your idea or maybe your test is something that's worth the company's time and money to follow through with. Especially as a project manager, there's gonna be a lot of pressure on you to get that project together 
and bring all those minds together and have a successful project in a really short amount of time, which can be kind of overwhelming for some. You're gonna have to really hone in on those soft skills. You're gonna have to be a networker, developing new relationships. You're gonna have to be a leader, leading teams to get something done. You're gonna have to be a salesman, selling your ideas and your tests and your projects to upper management. And you're gonna have to be a manager in all sense of the word. Now, the good thing about all this is that managers usually have a faster track for career growth and that means higher salaries and that's why chemical engineers are often paid more than a lot of others. Next, chemical engineers usually work for really large companies. Most chemical plants take a lot of capital and a lot of money to operate and only the extra large companies can handle that and extra large companies are also on the stock market. They're heavily influenced by the stock exchange and whatever opinions and trends are going on right now in Wall Street. The reason that's important is because the stock market is really gonna impact you as an engineer. If your stocks are doing well that quarter, you might see more raises, more opportunities, and more bonuses. If your stocks aren't doing too well, then you might actually see some hiring freezes or even layoffs if it comes down to it. So you really have to keep in mind what the stock market trends are at the time. So I'm gonna talk about the chemical market for a little bit. There's three different sectors in the chemical industry in America. There's specialty chemicals, which serve a really unique purpose. They're usually patented. They're usually very uniquely designed. Um, materials that no other company can make. That's really a hot market. There's fine chemicals such as pharmaceuticals, really small batch uh, uh, chemicals. That's also pretty popular right now. Now, commodity chemicals are the really big production, big scale chemicals that just about anyone can make because they're not usually patented and uh, they're really a numbers game where it's just as many as you can make as fast as possible, that's who wins. That's like your petroleum or even ethanol and hand sanitizer. Now, in general, the stock market hasn't been too kind to the commodity chemical sector. Commodity chemicals are a numbers game. The winner is the one who makes it the fastest and the cheapest. So it's generally thought that commodity chemicals made outside of the US are gonna be more efficient and we shouldn't invest so much in the commodity chemical production within the US. So what that means to an engineer is that there's not gonna be as many plants, there's not gonna be as many opportunities for growth, and there's not gonna be as much uh, career potential. Not only is that gonna be a problem for folks in that sector, but across the field of chemical engineering, there's gonna be a lower demand. However, don't be too discouraged. There's still a lot of excitement on Wall Street for chemically engineered products, mostly in the fine and specialty chemical markets. We've got water treatment solutions, which is really hot right now and considered to be the future. There's agriculture and pharmaceuticals, which are consistently performing. Then there's also gonna be your batteries, hydrogen fuel cells, the semiconductor and uh, silicone chip manufacturers. There's a lot of really hot chemical markets right now and a lot of room for a chemical engineer to grow as professional. Now finally, I've talked a lot about process engineering, but not all chemical engineers go off to work in plants and oil rigs. A lot of chemical engineers work in product development or research. A lot of them get into environmental engineering. They can get into the regulatory side of things. They often become material scientists and materials engineers. It goes into a lot of different areas and chemical engineering impacts just about every industry in America. A lot of chemical engineers take it into a completely different direction. This is considered to be a highly respected and technical problem solving major and a lot of companies respect it. So a lot of chemical engineers might go off and become an actuary for an insurance company or maybe they'll be an analyst at a consulting firm or a bank. You can also really quickly get into the IT realm. Lots of chemical engineers study coding and they do a lot of coding-based projects in their curriculum, so it really makes a lot of sense for them to transfer into a software engineering job or a data science job if, that was, if that's what makes sense to them at the time. So that's it for now. Thanks for being here. I really hope you guys got something out of it, especially if you're just looking into this field for the first time. I hope you subscribe because I got a lot more stuff like this coming right up. Please like if you liked it and comment below. I really want to hear your thoughts on this one. Let me know if I missed the mark on something or if something took you by surprise and let me know if you guys have any other ideas for future videos. Anyhow, that's all for me for today. We'll see you later.